Bobby will be dragging if you keep leaving these wet towels on the floor. This time next year, where will I be? Trying to get this channel monetized, quite possibly. Closer or further to my best life. Inspiring the kids or just annoying my wife. Regretting that something that I didn't do and becoming a bit of a bore. Will this year at the dragon be my time to breathe fire in 2024? Uh. Hi there, my name's James and thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. In this podcast episode, I'm going to talk about a topic that Alex Hormozy, who is one of my favourite podcasters, recently discussed in one of his videos. And it's on the topic of inverted thinking. I'm on a mission to try and support parents, specifically dads, and I suppose even more specifically, dads like myself, who have often struggled with their mental health. If you'd like to support me with this, please hit subscribe, or if you're listening to this on my podcast, please hit follow. And if you ever listen to an episode that you think a friend might like, please share it with them. Apparently, inversion thinking is a really, really helpful technique in how to basically improve your life in every element of your life. Charlie Munger always said it wasn't something that he's come up with, Apparently Einstein was reported to say, invert, always invert. Who's Charlie Munger? An American businessman who very sadly passed away recently at the age of 99. Invert, always invert. And by that I mean, instead of thinking, what can I do to make more money next year? You flip the idea on its head and say, what could I do to guarantee I don't make any money next year? Oddly, human beings tend to be much better at focusing on problems than they are on solutions. For example, if I ask you to list five things you feel grateful for, that might take some time. Whereas if I ask you to list five things you feel cross about, you're unhappy with, you could probably give me 500. So in my case, instead of saying, what do I need to do to grow my podcast next year, which is a very complex and difficult question to which there probably isn't an easy answer to, the concept of inverted thinking tells me that instead of that, I should say, what can I do next year to destroy my podcast? So for example, if I stop producing content, I've talked on length in previous podcasts about how basically the key to success is consistency, just turning up. Having the discipline just to keep turning up, keep producing content, keep doing whatever you want, even if it doesn't necessarily instantly deliver the results you hope for, because that's not how success works. Success is so much about just staying in the game. But if basically I ask myself the question, how could I destroy my podcast? Well, don't produce any content or produce crap content. You're on the right track then. Or don't research your content or only produce content that you like, as opposed to researching what are my competitors doing? What are the people who have YouTube channels or podcast channels, the size that I would like to aspire to having? What are they doing? What content, what topics are they discussing? Instead of doing that, I do the opposite. And what else could I do? Don't tell anyone about what I'm doing. Be all self-conscious about it. Be apologetic about it. If you can make a list of all the things you could do to be less successful next year and then just do the opposite, that's a pretty good starting point. So with that in mind, if you're like me and probably like everyone else on the planet, you're coming to the end of the year and the beginning of the next year and thinking, I generally would like to be in a better position this time next year, but how do I do that? If you're massively overwhelmed by the concept of trying to improve in all areas of your life, then a really simple way would maybe just say, give yourself some headings, finances, relationships, health, and write down five things that you could do to be in a worse position this time next year than a better position. So for example, for health, how could I be more unhealthy this time next year? Do no exercise, sit on the sofa, eat crap food, have no structure, have no discipline, don't be consistent. If you write down that list and even review that list every now and again, I don't even think it's necessary to write down the corresponding solutions. I think just you reviewing the list of things you shouldn't do is probably enough of a trigger to help you do what you need to do. So when it comes to finances, write down five things that you could do next year to become completely bankrupt and then do the opposite. Get loads of credit cards. Don't have a budget. Live beyond your means. I'm stressing, don't do any of these things. Do the opposite of these things. And how about goals and aspirations? Don't write anything down. Don't make any sort of plan. Just be like a rudderless ship, just sort of sailing into some sort of unknown destination. Do the opposite. Plan it. Make a list. Work out how you're going to get there. Evaluate it frequently. I really hope you got some of this podcast. If you're not following Alex Hormozy, 
I would suggest you do so because his content's brilliant. I think you love Alex Hormozy. I don't love Alex Hormozy. You talk about him an awful lot. Well, maybe a little bit. That mind matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday.